Well, I was <clears throat> a little surprised that we played that well defensively. You know, we tried to do a number of things with switching, and I wasn't sure how it would work on, on such a good passing team and shooting team, but it, it worked really well. Our bigs did not get beat off the guards, and our, and our guards did not get hurt in a low post, which was a little surprising to me. And when you hold a Bellman to 10 assists in a game and 32%, you're playing good defense. Offensively, what I told the guys, we're a good shooting team, but you took the wrong type of shots. When you try to shoot a three off a pick and roll or a staggered screen, that's the time you want to get in the lane. And the best three ways to get a three are an offensive rebound with a step in, or a dribble penetration throw out, and a low post out. And we weren't doing that until the second half. So I, I was really pleased in some areas. Uh, we know what we have to work on. I got a chance to see who gets nervous in, 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 at the Yum Center for the first time. And I, I think, without question, I think a couple of our freshmen were real nervous, and then they, they settled down a little bit. So it was good that I got a chance to see the other guys, and I thought <clears throat> I thought um, Jalen did a tremendous job. And Nanu, when he, st when he stays out of foul trouble, uh, played really well also. Those two guys stuck out. Mango did a very good job on the backboard also. <clears throat> Can you just hand me a water, please? <clears throat> You know, I just think at the end there, I, I thought, you know, on the one call where the guy was backing him in, backing him in, I didn't think it was a foul. And he just got to stop reaching in like he, he had on the fifth. But I, I, he, not was a lot like Montrez Harrell in terms of, you. He, today's his 19th birthday, but he, he's very smart. He, he really knows the game like Montrez knows the game. So I, he'll figure that out. Yeah, he didn't shoot the ball. He, he's been one of, thank you, he's been one of the better shooters. He didn't shoot the ball, but... You know, anytime you, he understands the point. I mean, Trey is learning the point. Q knows the point. So, you know, th those two guys will play a lot together. And I, basically what I told Q is that don't let starting or not starting bother you. At the end of the year, you'll be one, two, or three in minutes played. And that's what we're all about. Coach, you're a big guy. As far as Jalen Johnson goes, after the last scrimmage, you said you wanted him to play like a four, four man. Did he do that? I thought he did a great job tonight. <clears throat> He's a... Um, he was playing like that the first three weeks. Then he tailed off a little bit. Like I've always said, these guys are great guys. The toughest thing in practice is the second team, no matter who you put on, keeps beating the first team. And I, I mix it up, so it's not like... But they're just all so close that it's tough to single out outside of Damian Lee, you know, and, and Shinano maybe, who the best guys are. Is this going to be a better free throw shooting? Y'all yeah, couldn't be worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, it, it like yeah, even fun. Nanu, like Nanu made 19 in a row the other day underhanded in practice. And, you know, at least it looks like it's going to go in now. You know, we were very good offensive rebounding off his free throws last year. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, your big guys seem to have a lot of length, but they also have a lot of quickness from, you know, the top all the way down. Is that going to be a big advantage for you guys this year? Yeah, I think, you know, Ray Spalding does some things. You know, every single day, he's highest in deflections. Uh, he's very quick. Uh, they're all, all very quick, and it would have been nice if, if Mott's threw down that dunk because he's playing so much better in practice. Uh, it's going to take him a while to, to get there, but he keeps the ball up now. He ball fakes well. His shot looks better. His free throw looks better. He's coming on. So the, um, we don't have any fear of putting any of our big guys in the game. Paint touches were a focus. At the end. Second half. At the end of last year, though, you, you brought it up so much. Now when you get those guys the ball, are they – were able to score and convert those. I thought Mango made a great move. He, he, he got a pass, he head faked, he took a power dribble, and uh, I thought that was a great move. He wouldn't have been able to do that last year. What do you think of Bellman? What, what do you think of this Bellman team? I think, you know, I, I was, I thought this would be a very close game because they're a veteran team. We're, we're an inexperienced team, and but I was surprised. Uh, I think they're going to have a great shot at, at being a Final Four team again. I think that they're a better free throw sh uh, shooting team than they are tonight. But I think we did a very good job in switching. And, and when you switch with them and they can't, they can't get the ball to the pe right people, uh, it hurts them. But they're one of the best passing team, shooting teams in the nation. Uh, they're fun to watch. And it's a great game for us to have to work on our defense. Because from every underneath that a balance play and every option they run, it's either back door, it's either screen to screen or action. You've got to be really alert. That's why we switch so much tonight. Coach, uh, 17 assists on 23 made baskets. Is that just because of all the extra practice time so uh, early? I think, I think it is, but also what's impressive to me, you know, we got 34 deflections tonight in a low-scoring game. 
And I think our guys learn from this game tonight because we, you know, Trey's got a, Trey's a really good basketball player, but he's got a lot to learn about our defensive system. Like there were a lot of plays that he gave up easy baskets because he doesn't understand what we do yet, but he will understand it because he's, he's got a lot of heart. How much different is it for hmm. you coaching guys like Trey and Damian come in, they're going to play significant minutes for you, but they're, you know, just here for the ball? You know, it's a one and done and a different option, but if, if I could get one of these guys, they're, they're probably someday going to change that rule, I would imagine. But if you could get one guy like that every year, I mean, we would have been in a total rebuilding mode this year if it wasn't for getting those two guys. Because you can see that Donovan's got a lot of talent, Deng's got a lot of talent, Ray's got a lot of talent, but they're freshmen. And they're still going to make freshman mistakes. There's no way around that. But when you get two guys who, who, have, who have been the key component to their team and everybody's trying to stop them, that experience is invaluable. You see Jalen making the most progress? I just think he, when he plays with such awesome energy, you know, he got on the floor for loose basketballs, offensive rebounds, made tough moves. The first three weeks he's playing just like that. And then the next two weeks, he backed down. Then Honest looked good. Then Mots looked good. They were all taking turns. The only consistent guy has been Mango. So he, if he can give us what he gave us tonight, that's pretty special performance because he, he was 6 eight from the field with 10 rebounds. What kind of leader can Mango be for this team compared to some of the past guys? I think all three of these guys have great leadership abilities. You know, Trey is the is the ult, ultimate positive person that gathers them all the time. Mango's the guy that keeps them laughing, keeps them loose, keeps them passionate. And then Damien's, Damien everybody looks up to. So the three of them are special people. It's unusual. It's a very unusual group. I am not since 87 have I had a team like this. Uh, and as you get to know them, you'll understand that it's not just chalk talk. They're an incredible group for 2015. You don't see this too much. Like, at the end of the game, I forgot, uh, I'm getting old, but J um, Jay Henderson, I forgot he's on our team, you know, because he's just transferred in. <laughs> and I only have six coaches making a million dollars plus. They didn't mention a word. But Nanu said, uh, combined, Nanu said, uh, hey, coach, you forgot Jay. And I put them right in the game. So they really care about each other, which is a great sign. The coaches said to hell with him. <laughs> what does it mean to have Ralph back? Well, I'll end it with this. One of the great stories I've ever heard is Ralph missed practice yesterday. He was supposed to come back. And he, um, he got on a flight, and they canceled his flight. So he shows up the next day at 7 o'clock. It's on his flight. So, you know, he's had these heart problems. And um, all of a sudden... The guy says, we can't go to Sh Charlotte or wherever he's connecting. We have to go to Fort Myers because our landing gear, something's wrong. So they go to land in um, Fort Myers, and they go to hit the bottom, and the plane goes up again. So now he's really worried, and they do it a second time. So they finally land it, and it's not like, a, but we, he sees ambulances and trucks and fire trucks coming out. And he's saying to me, he said, I know it's Louisville doing this to me. I know it's Louisville. And <laughs> as he lands, he goes to get up, and the flight attendant's yelling at him to sit down. He says, I got to get, like, not nitroglycerin. It's, he's got to get this pill because his heart's out of flesh. So he's going up to reach, or going up to reach. And she's telling him to sit down, and he's grabbing his heart, telling him it's my heart. Well, she thinks he's having a heart attack. <laughs> so now he gets the pill, and they get off the plane, and there's these three ladies in wheelchairs, and they're all talking about Ralph, and they have a, a gurney ready to take him from there and he refuses to get on the gurney and he has to sign a waiver and they're trying to get out because he thought he he grabbed his heart and said he's having a heart attack <laughs> and that's his that's his way back to Louisville so it is great to have him but there's always a, a story behind that all right thank you